Welcome to Around the Product Development, our weekly series where we dive deep into the world of digital product creation, all in just 25 minutes. Here we explore every stage from ideation to conversion and monetization, providing you with actionable insights and practical knowledge. Each week, we bring you fresh perspectives from industry experts, giving you the opportunity to learn directly from their hands-on experience. All this is possible thanks to our Agile Product Builders community, which is a Slack community powered by Boulder, a digital product creators and consultants. And I'm super excited to introduce uh, our today's guest, one of my colleagues from Boulder, Andrew Nostrin, who is an extremely talented product designer with a strong background in crafting user-centric designs. Uh, Andre uh, also has been pivotal in creating intuitive, engaging user experience across various business sectors. Uh, however, today we'll be diving into a fascinating discussion on user experience in one particular uh, business sector, which is renewable energy business. Andre will share his insights on the unique challenges and opportunities in designing for this rapidly growing and impactful industry. But before we go directly to the questions, welcome, Andre. Could you maybe tell us a bit more about yourself, uh, about your role within Boulder as a product designer? Hi, Oscar. Yes, sure. I can share some, some something about me. So thanks for having me here, by the way. I'm Andre, as uh, you said before, and I'm a product designer at Boulder with over five years of experience. Nearly half of that I spent working with renewable energy companies. And I design solution for companies and entering the market with uh, PV panels and those with a more comp comprehensive uh, approach. And a fun fact, I'm currently broadcasting from Poznan. Awesome. And just to give our audience the, the context, uh, as Boulder, uh, we have designed and developed dozens of, of products covering customer portals, mobile web apps for, for different segments of users, all within these business sectors, uh, covering uh, electric chargers, solar panels, uh, wind turbines, maintenance software, so uh, a plethora of, of different solutions even uh, supported and, and guided some of the biggest digital transformation within this uh, business sector. So uh, that's why we cover this topic today, uh, since uh, our experts, as, as Andy here, has extremely vast experience in this field. And going straight to our topic, why is user experience so crucial? in apps for renewable energy companies, such a, you know, fast growing market as we as we have today. And maybe follow up questions to this one. How does UX design directly impact the adoption and effectiveness of different multiple solutions within this business sector? Okay, so why user experience is crucial. Um, yeah, sure. Mm, there is a se se several reasons and uh, it directly impacts the adoption and effectiveness of renewable energy solution. And uh, for example, we can say simplifying complex information, something like that, because renewable energy system like solar panels and battery storage uh, involves complex data and processes. Uh, Well-designed UX simplify those complexity, making it uh easier for user to understand how their system um, are performing how much energy energy they are generating or consuming and how they can optimize their usage um, when information is presented clearly and intuitively the user is more likely to engage with the app for example and make informed decision about their energy usage and also we can mention enhancing user engagement because a good Sorry, good uh, UX uh, ensure that the app is not only functional but also enjoyable to use, right? Because that's why we don't download those apps. And when user find an app easy to navigate and 
uh, essentially pleasing, they are more likely to use it uh, more regularly. And this uh, uh, consistent engagement is crucial for monitoring energy system, optimizing performance, and uh, for example, in defining potential issues early, leading to better overall uh, system efficiency. Um, what else can we mention that maybe facilitating education and awareness? Because sure, yeah. uh, the 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 renewable energy, it's uh, you know, it's not easy to understand, uh, and sometimes renewable energy is still a re re relatively a new concept for many users. A strong UX can help educate users about, for example, uh, how their system work and the, the benefits of the renewable energy. Uh, by integrating educational content in a way that's uh, access, accessible and uh, engaging. Um, the app can increase user awareness uh, and understanding, leading to more informed decision and great, a greater overall satisfaction with their renewable energy solution. And yeah, can you, can you Oscar, uh, please? Uh, because you, you, you had a second question. Um, Actually, you, you covered it all. Um, okay. I was I was I was I was asking about the impact of the you know uh, the app and their effectiveness for this particular business sector. And you mentioned that introduction of this kind of solutions also increase awareness throughout the audience and uh, have direct impact on their daily activities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's 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 amazing actually uh this is something uh i didn't know like from the glance uh that this could be an impact factor for this kind of usage but coming back to the user experience um uh, i would love to ask about major challenges you encounter in in, in this particular business sector as energy as renewable uh energy is uh, if you have any examples, uh, so this would be very nice if you could just share some. And I was thinking about maybe some key differences uh, in terms of, I don't know, user expectations for renewable energy apps compared to other industries. If you have some already in mind, uh, would be amazing. Yeah, I, I will start with a few challenges here. And uh, so the, the, the main challenge here, if we're talking about renewable energy, it's uh, amount of information, right? The business goal of our clients don't always align perfectly with the needs of their user, for example. That's why we act as a bridge helping to align user needs with the business objective. Uh, one common ch uh, challenge is managing the amount of information available. Because while business have access to vast amount of data from their system, I and mean, even additional insight from third party app, because they're using, using the API and stuff like that, user can often feel overwhelmed by this information to them. It may seems like an uh, overly complicated manual that's difficult to understand and use, for example. And our role is here to help our client identify what their user truly need. Uh, ensuring that the information uh, presented is clear, easy to digest, and meets their expectation. We aim to avoid um, creating solutions that are too technical for the average user, while still providing the option to dive deeper into uh, more detailed uh, data um, for those who want it. And this balance help us make the experience uh, accessible to everyone, because there is there is diff two different group and we will mention them during this conversation and regardless of their technical experience, they can use our app. And the second thing I want to mention because we also solving the problem, for example, when we're creating an app for the renewable energy business has uh, its challenges. Like the biggest one is making sure that all of, all of the parts of the system like batteries, PV panels, inverters, and sometimes chargers because different company have a, a different uh, system. And all of those components work well together in a simple and unified way. Uh, the app needs to show real-time data, allow easy monitoring and control and be user-friendly, first of all, 
for both expert and regular user, which we mentioned before. And plus the app should help user learn about energy efficiency and uh, sustainability while being easy to use, right? So those challenges, which I can mention right now, and yeah, maybe I will, I will, I will mention something during the conversation, but for now, Sure, sure, definitely. And uh, maybe if you spot on right away, do you have, you know, any key differences between this particular business sector as renewable energy apps are to compare uh, to other industries? You mentioned big data collection, you, you mentioned user segmentation and, you know, dynamic uh, approach in terms of presented content or functionalities, right? Uh, do you spot yep. any any key differences right away, or there are not so many? My question is, like, whenever you approach the renewable business sector, your approach is pretty much similar to the others you conduct within Boulder on your on your projects in terms of, for example, UX design, research, implementation. Or there are some particular nuances, differences, uh, particular to this sector. I believe we have something unique here, but actually we're talking about understanding user needs and goals, improving usability and stuff like that. So basically, this this renewable energy thing will 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 generate some problems which we need to solve. But sometimes those problems are the same as a different uh industries will have and yeah and what what also can i mention here because it's also uh, important to understand that every user is unique when we're talking about uh, renewable energy because um th they have own key reason for deciding to invest in renewable energy system or pv panels because for some of the main motivator is environmental concern uh, and they wanting to reduce their household co2 fo footprints and contribute the healthier planet right but for example there is also different group and like other are driven by needs to cut energy costs for example right and especially in a uh, regions where electricity prices are uh, high for example or even to profit by selling excess energy back to the grid but regardless of their reason all all of those users share the common needs they want to closely monitor the energy flow both uh, in terms of historical and real-time data and that's maybe what uh, where is the difference appear that like we're working with the historical data and live data and that's also challenges here right yeah I, I may say you sound like an expert from renewable energy business sector. And what you just said, creating the user-centric design, uh, user flow, right? You need to be fluent in this business sector. You need to be extremely fluent in how the users and users will interact with it. What are their needs and expectations? Because you even segmented the end user. I mean, the the one who actually installs the, the panels or any other uh, solution in, in their place, right? And they have different motivations you need to actually answer to, right? Uh, that's super interesting. And you mentioned that uh, one of your biggest challenges when designing such an experience is having too much data to show to users. Uh, how do you ensure that the UX uh, Yes, effectively communicating, you know, complex uh, analysis, so diagrams uh, in a user-friendly way. How do you how do you deal with it on a daily basis? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And actually, what we're starting with, like, we need to understand that uh, when we're talking about renewable energy and different uh, industries, also there always will be two group of people. And then let's imagine that uh, we have a technical and non-technical uh, users, right? And imagine you just bought a new product with almost unlimited features because renewable energy provide uh, a lot of data and information for you. And it can show you its current performance limit, limits and sometimes even uh, device temperature and more. However, it's only provide data without indicating uh, 
if something is wrong or if you're using it incorrectly, this lack of guidance can be stressful and frustrating, right? And uh, potentially making you less interested in uh, using the product. So, and uh, on the other hand, uh, if the product not only show its performance, but also alerts you about uh, potential the potential risks, uh, fil uh, filters out repetitive information and perform, per perform circulation for you, it will simplify your experience. And instead of sifting through multiple data points, uh, you get a clear summarized view of what matters most. And this approach would make it easier to use and more engaging, encouraging you to check the app uh, regularly. And like to, to compare all those two groups, let's imagine that you are a really high technical person and you, you can go through this app and you will understand everything, but from, the, from a different way, you will have, let's imagine that you now consider to buying the system as a gift, for example, for your parents or grandparents. And if the app is complex and poorly organized, that's the main thing which we struggling with and working with, that my struggle to, they may struggle to use it, right? And that will lead to frustration and negative feedback. A well-designed user-friendly interface is crucial here to ensure a positive experience and avoid potential of reputation damage for the company. And that's how we're covering those both group, high technical and less technical uh, users. Right. And you also mentioned that um, very often, renewables apps need to combine more than two functions, meaning serve more than one segment of, of potential user. I'm not even talking about the end users, technical, non-technical ones, right? But we need to serve them. So if they want to charge a car or uh, check out the, the battery levels, right? Uh, but uh, we need to serve as well people who install those solutions. For example, solar panels on homes, et cetera, right? And if you could just talk about a bit on Boulder's best practices for creating a product that actually meets the needs of, of these both groups, or so there are maybe some more groups than what I just mentioned. Yeah, so basically um, there is a third challenge that we can mention, and but we really had to talk about is, is the first one because our client from the renewable energy industry do not always have to work with a highly technical and trained pers person, but sometimes it happens. And now we're talking about installers, right? Uh, and support this group of people is very important and creating an understandable installation process for them is even more important. Sometimes we are in a situation where Together with uh, our client, we create a place not only for end user, but also uh, for those who will install the system for us. We also try to make this process very transparent and um, and support them uh, uh, at every stage because their time is very important to us and uh, to our client. So for example, creating the possibility of checking the installation or adding something to the uh, existing installation. And we try and avoiding place that can block those people uh, at some stage and always pay attention to the fact that the place where they work is very specific. For example, in a dark rooms, basement, uh, etc. And also here can be a different case. Uh, smaller companies might find it easier to hire the house experts but uh, larger global companies often needs to work with uh, external um, partners, right? Because we cannot have an installer in each country. So that's why we uh, asking for help in the different companies. And this requires to uh, like the application to offer the different solution to meet uh, diverse needs. And yeah, that's if we're talking about installers, because they they also part of our our adventure, our our app application, and we also creating solution for them. And that the the best way is to create flow for them in the same app because they they can interact with the user, they can provide information for the user, they can support them, and if user will uh, have some problem, they can reach installer and ask for help. Sure. Yeah. 
uh, the basement thing uh, and the mode. This is something I actually, you know, as a regular user, uh, I wouldn't even consider such a thing or, or being a, pro a product manager, right? Not knowing the business. So this is extremely crucial to first get all, all the knowledge possible from hands on the best, uh, like, you know, talking to those people, right? Talking to those installers, talking, talking to those end users and making sure that all their needs not spotted in any other apps uh, could actually be implemented in our solution, right? So uh, very, very thoughtful. And I was thinking, uh, because you mentioned that you've been working on this particular business sector for a while now, uh, in what ways uh, this experience in the renewable energy industry influence your approach to UX design across other sectors? Is there something you you know just lessons learned, something you you will take on your journey further on? Mm, you're talking more about like design processes, right? To, to design processes, approach, how to talk to people, something something for you, something you learned uh, from this multiple projects and you will take uh, whenever the business sector change, you'll take with you and you'll know that this could be a you know good tip, good, good, uh, good way to go. Yeah, so my personal design process adapts to the fast evolving nature of the renewable energy sector, right? By uh, staying flexible and user-centered, uh, first of all. I prioritize continuous research to keep up with the industry trends and uh, um, emerging technologies, uh, allowing me to anticipate uh, changes and uh, incorporate them into a design. And regular user testing and feedback loops ensure that the solution uh, remains uh, relevant and effective. Um, and uh, no, I also focus uh, on a scalable and modular design approach, uh, right. making it easier to update and ad adapt to the product as the sector evolves. Because we know that, that like you mentioned, the uh, renewable energy is something new for us, and we are experimenting with that. And this way, the design stays aligned with both industry uh, advancement and user needs. Okay, yeah, sounds, sounds reasonable. And for the audience, if we have somebody straight from this business sector looking for, you know, idea or maybe have already an idea, but looking to implement this idea into life, what would be the, I don't know, some, some, tools or maybe tips or approach you'd like to share something from your experience that will facilitate the journey something that make it easier for them uh to start again very interesting question because you know if i need to mention just a few of them because it can be hard because it's a big big industry with uh, needs and and stuff like that so but uh, sure like to summarize or summarize uh, summarize of the like few rules and tips based on experience uh, the renewable energy sector it will be uh, probably it will be simply uh, simplify complex data because we we talk we talked about that and focus on clear intuitive data visualization to help user understand for example complex information easily because like we mentioned before the the client can provide unlimited data and it can be overwhelmed for the user and this ins ensures that user uh, regardless of their technical background can make information uh, in, in informed decisions mm. and also i can may mention maybe prioritize uh, prior prior sorry <laughs> prioritize yeah, because mm -hmm. when you go through this app, you also need to learn something about this app. So design interface that educate users about the technology and its benefits, making the experience more accessible and less uh, intimidating uh, for those uh, unfamiliar with technology. Let's call it like that. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, and also if we talk, uh, talk uh, already about the technical and non-technical uh, groups, that's balance technical and non-technical needs. This can be also the good tips, address the needs of the technical expert and lay user, uh, by, uh, and uh, lay user by providing different levels of details uh, and customization option, ensuring usability across diverse user groups. Um, yeah, I, I think. Thank you, Dan. I think those yeah. Things, yeah. Extremely good ones. And uh, thank you, Andrew, for, for the talk. We've actually reached our our time. So thank you once again. Uh, dear audience, if you're interested in joining Agile Product Builders community and still hesitate on, on some reason, do not anymore and, and join us. It's a Slack community. And I would, already would love to invite all of you to our next episode, uh, which is as usual on Monday, 3 p.m. So see you next Monday. Have a great day. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you.